Hello and welcome to this brief video in our series on CDT and psychology. My name is Dr. Darren Stevens, and this is a run through the ideas of stages, but from an illustrative perspective. So there are lots of slides in this video and we will not focus on all of them as they are simply for illustration purposes. So I would ask that you pause the video in any slide that takes your fancy before I click onto the next one. So why do we associate steps with levels of adult development? The clue is in the name, levels of development. There's no getting away from the fact that a level or a stage or a plateau constructs a certain image in our minds. And we automatically associate it with the development because ever since Piaget, researchers search for stages and they always get what they search for. The next few slides will demonstrate this before moving our, our thinking onto how we do it within a constructed development theory perspective. Every researcher made their own images. What do you notice about the images as we progress? Ericsson can be illustrated like a staircase, or a larger staircase, but still a step-based image. So let's take this to the adult arena for now. I am sure you can name the main protagonists, but I'll do it quickly here. Jane Lovinger, Robert Keegan, Otto Lasky, Suzanne Kukgoita, Bill Torbert, Michael Commons, Michael Muscolo, Michael Basekis, and all the Michaels, and so on. How do their images represent their thinking? And not forgetting there are biological and sociological factors to consider too. However, for us and CDT, we are looking at the complexity of stage development for adults, so we'll focus on those that illustrate this. As any researcher in adult development will tell you, we stand on the shoulders of giants, and two such giants are Robert Keegan and Jane Lovinger. The third giant for me is Otto Lasky. These are typical illustrations of Keegan's ideas. As is this, it infers a staircase and a vertical direction of growth. And then there are other researchers, such as Dr. Kelly, who maps out the stages, but it's not their own idea of a stage. These are the standard ideas by Lervinger and others, and Dr. Kelly is simply illustrating them here. However, is development a mountain range? It's not a bad idea, it's not a bad analogy. This being another example of someone taking on an earlier researcher's work and simply adding a few extra stages to make it appear as though she has added some value. However, I'm not quite convinced by this. And then we have aspects of adult development in a work environment. Elliot Jacques is responsible for instigating a lot of this research. Notice the illustration. Jacques talked about the span of discretion or how long your decisions have to be useful. It's obvious that a decision within a 30 minute window is far less complex than one that needs to be valid for 20 years. And then we get the inevitable pyramids or even icebergs we often see in stage development to illustrate levels. Notice how the higher up you go, the smaller the plateau becomes. This does not represent the level of thinking required at the top of the pyramid, in my humble opinion. Perhaps the pyramid should be upside down instead. And from a business perspective, we tend to get leadership development levels. Typically, they are illustrated as stages, like all the others. Nine stages of ego development. Check out Kurt Goiter's work if you like her approach. Notice the numbers. I know there is no getting around the numbers, and thus the idea of betterment in stage development, in that six is better than five is better than four, this is a good image, as is this. More numbers, but on a different scale. This seems like a speed dial in a car in my mind. Again, there's no escaping the numbers. What seems to be meaningless as we move through every stage is the label, but that can be discussed in another video. In this video, the left side will be unaware and the right side will be aware to varying degrees. And here we have the very famous spiral of spiral dynamics. It's an awesome illustration and it lets people know that as we go higher, the perspective gets bigger. For me, it also suggests that we can slide back down a level. However, it doesn't say if going down a level can be achieved from a position of awareness and choice. The image is great though. Now, if we add all of the above to the four pillars of constructive development theory, what could the representative image look like? The seven levels of self-awareness self could look like this. Notice the numbers again. I didn't say I wasn't a hypocrite. At least I am aware. And in the true spirit of vertical development, I am trying to heal my own hypocrisy with the final slide. So if we must map CDT to other systems, then we could replicate their ideas too. This is CDT on the right, mapped to the main lineage of thought on the left. But we know from the development onion that stages are not necessarily the answer. And the more we understand about stage transition and how it works from an intention awareness choice response perspective with bridging and shells and so on, the greater our need for a better representation of adult development. The problem is AQ7 isn't just better than AQ6, it's much better. It is a factorial better than 6, and offers a far greater expression of one's thinking and awareness than 6 does. How do we illustrate this in a diagram? As a staircase won't do it, spirals don't do it, 
Mountains miss the point. Notice in this simple diagram how the levels of awareness grow across the context. This image is okay, but it's a snapshot of what's happening. How do we show movement and growth in an image? Especially when we know how the spiral of development deconstructs using cognitive intentions. And CDT has billions and billions of potential profiles, so there has to be something better than a staircase or a spiral to illustrate the magnitude of the thinking within each. If we are to separate CDT from the other systems out there, using cognitive intentions and the four pillars, then we need a better diagram, a better representation. And it's on the next slide. The other illustrations are missing the exponential aspects of a stage movement for a human being. This is why AQA is not just a more capable thinker than AQ5, but they are magnitudes of thinking better. And this diagram is the only way right now that I can illustrate this. It simultaneously tells us what our mind's capacity is, what we know about our construction of self, what we think and how we know about what we do. The spiral doesn't do this to the same degree. Stairs or steps do not do this. They let you know where you are and how much further up the scale you might have to climb. But I think the Fibonacci sequence also tells us what we are missing in our current situation, even if we are at AQ8. The reason I like this image as an illustration of vertical growth is because of how the Fibonacci sequence progresses. 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, and so on, with each term being the sum of the two preceding terms. Think about this. AQ8 then becomes a sum of AQ7 and AQ6 thinking. I think this is a more useful way of demonstrating what an individual K can see in terms of intention awareness choice response and simultaneously what they cannot see, which shows where the room for growth is. It doesn't matter which level we might reside at, there is always more out of awareness than in awareness. And this image also captures that important aspect. It explains why no one so far has been seen to be AQ9. The sum of their self-awareness will be so great as to be on a higher plane of thinking. Thus, the Fibonacci sequence is the best illustration of vertical development we have. And it's not even vertical. Thank you for listening and watching. I make these videos on behalf of my many colleagues and members of the Institute for Adult Development so we can share our thinking and learn and grow at the same time. Please remember to like and subscribe. Take care.